and we're live. All right, we're live. Hey, everybody. This is Matt from Louisville Shaders. Joining me tonight is, uh, of course, William and Sarah, Josh and Brad from Cash Strength, Eric Waite from Eric Whis Wait Whiskey Studies, and then Carl, the legend Ivy uh, from the Brazos Valley Bourbon Society. The legend. The legend. <laughs> and tonight we're going to be talking about Psalm School and is worth from a student's perspective. And since Eric Wake started uh, his episode a couple of weeks ago about at the Whiskey Academy, we wanted to talk to him about it. And he was going to ask us a bunch of questions. And we're going to go from there. So I guess everyone wants to talk about uh, why they went to Whiskey Academy. That's probably the first good place to start for everybody. So. Well, I'll start things off uh, over here. Um, I am a wine sommelier for my restaurant, and I, while studying for that, I wanted to learn more about whiskey as well. Uh, found the Whiskey Marketing School and immediately started saving up money, knowing that whiskey was my preferred beverage anyway. Along the way, my wife joined me. And yeah, I discovered that I enjoyed whiskey a lot. I liked learning about it. I like blending it. So I figured take first step to get into the industry and get certified to be a, a sommelier. Uh, kind of a foot in the door type of thing for me. Plus I get to, you know, have access to the large mm -hmm. amounts of whiskey in the vaults. <laughs> yeah, the vault is probably the most attractive thing of the whole deal. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it doesn't hurt. It doesn't oh, yeah. hurt for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I think I'm probably uh, maybe similar to Brad in that, um, you know, I didn't have any really specific, you know, industry or job related goals. I just know mm -hmm. I had a a large curiosity about whiskey. I'd been into, you know, probably about two years of being interested in it. And, uh, you know, of course I live in Austin nearby the wizard Academy. So I got to spend a bunch of time with those folks and kind of learn what they were all about. And, um, ultimately it was a gift. Uh, it was an anniversary gift from my wife, Gretchen. So, um, I decided I would go and, uh, and take the class and, and I had a great time. Yeah, so like Josh says, I, I have no designs to uh, do anything professionally with whiskey, at least not yet. But I did a whiskey uh, tasting with Daniel Whittington up uh, at the Wizard Academy and was just instantly hooked. And when I found out they did classes, like, okay, I got, I'll do that. <laughs> so spend a couple of days in, in that vault with, the, with all of those whiskeys and learning about it. Sure. And then... I was hooked, and I've been back twice since then, as the the chain uh, signifies. A major bling. Yeah, yeah Brad, it, it hangs a little lower than the level one and two. So <laughs> <laughs> we've got ours rigged up, so nice. They don't hang as low. I did not prepare, so mm. no, it is it's okay. It's okay. Well, I think my uh, I think my story is kind of the same. We went to um, the vault for the distillery opening, and uh, actually met. Uh, Matt up in the vault for a tour and just being up in the vault really opens up the world of whiskey to you and it made me realize how much I don't know. I mean, mm -hmm. I was sort of newish to whiskey, I've been drink, uh, drinking bourbon, but never that deep into scotch and that I think really opened it up for me and I made the decision that day I was going to take the class once I looked and I realized it was not just about whiskey, it was about marketing and about public speaking and about creative writing and those things kind of really spoke to me. So the whole package was was pretty awesome. Yeah, I think it might be worth mentioning too that myself, Matt, Will, Sarah, and Carl were all in the same class. So yeah. yeah. Uh, also people are asking where in the world my medallion is. And I saw Ed in there saying that my medallion looks much smaller than everybody else. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, it's because if I put it on, I do have it here, but it just sort of just sort of hangs down below the camera. So so that point. We, have, we haven't heard from Matt yet as to uh, why he decided to go through the course. Okay, so basically, I love whiskey. Whiskey is the greatest <laughs> no, thing really? I've ever made. <laughs> so basically, once I found out you could go learn about it and get certified, that's the best thing ever. And you get to hang out with 2,000 whiskeys. I have yeah. a craft list. They have more whiskey than I do. I, mean, I have to go to this place. And they teach marketing and public speaking, things that I'm not great at, and actually gotten a lot better from taking that course. I'm really, really excited. And then the start of the channel is like, yeah, we got to totally take this course. And we decided I'll take it together. And it's just been a fabulous journey ever since. And I just love it. I think this is the this greatest opportunity to ever have is to go to the uh, Wizard Academy and take the take the course. So but looking forward to level two next year at some point in time. So yep, most people, people who've watched my channel, people who know me. So I spent 20 years in wine. I went back to college, studied enology. I interned and worked at uh, – 
uh, three different wineries. I've done consulting on the side. Uh, I then learned about the Wine Expert Educational Trust. I got the level three, then started studying for the diploma. There are six units. One of the units is on spirits. Um, so while preparing for blind tasting and theory exams, I got hooked on whiskey. My plan was to become a master, small, a master uh, of wine, but then that took me uh, on a, another route to study whiskey. I then um, started searching online for whiskey certifications, right? So I had, I was a certified sommelier with the Court of Master Sommeliers. I had a, 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 working on a diploma for the Wine Spur Educational Trust. I had a degree in enology, and I came across a couple of different educational programs online related to whiskey, some here in the United States, some in the UK, um, and the, the makeup and the outline and so forth, what they, and their emphasis was a little bit different. So I took the Whiskey Ambassador course, which was a course developed for those working uh, in the industry, primarily in, in Scotland originally, who so they could interact with uh, tourists coming to distilleries in Scotland. But I had also come across um, the Whiskey Vault, um, the, the, whiskey, the, the Academy. Um, and so I started watching, had this big question mark over my head, and I kind of was watching, with, you know, sort of mm, checking these guys out. Some things just seemed a little too strange. <laughs> um, and, and, I th and here's one of the reasons why. So if you look at when I studied with uh, three master sommeliers, they're wearing suits. It's very formal. You're learning fine dining, white tablecloths, service. Um, same thing in the whiskey thing is there, it was a little bit more serious. Um, it was like quite polished. And of course, the last thing you get from Daniel and Rex is a whole lot. Of, although Daniel, you get them on the shenanigans. Show, serious. <laughs> <laughs> there are a couple of goofballs. And that was where I was kind of like, yeah, I don't know about this. But if you guys seen my videos, you already know mm -hmm. I kept watching, kept watching, started interacting, and saw that these guys, among other things, built a community. It's not just that they got a really good stash of whiskey. Yeah. You can you can spend ten grand on whiskey and build your own yeah. whiskey library. Um, right. But they built a community, and they were conveying more than just sensory analysis or this or the how tos of this is how it's mm -hmm. made. They're conveying a whole. I would say attitude and atmosphere, uh, which is really something that kind of gets lost, which is being a wine sommelier is not about showing off how much knowledge you have to the people at the table, but serving and serving. How can they have the best time that they have? And one of the things that these guys have done is make the atmosphere of whiskey comfortable for the new people so yeah. that's what sort of i kind of liked i like the culture that they that they built and you know if you were to work you know in a, in a restaurant or a bar you might not be able to be that goofy all the time but you still would convey they still have that same sort of attitude of taking the snobbery out of it and that was probably one of the biggest things i, I eventually sort of took out of it as well as the fact that you know daniel can go deep in his information and knowledge because that guy uh, he knows his stuff Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I got into it is I love sharing whiskey. It's one of my absolute favorite things to do with whiskey is to share. So I like to get magical bottles and share with as many people as possible. Um, I mean, th those of you who have been to the house definitely know that we I share a lot of whiskey, a lot of really good whiskey. I don't care what, as long as it's open, what you can try it. So it's here for. And so that's one of my things that I really like about the Whiskey Vault is the fact that that's what it's about. There's no snobbery. It's all about sharing. It's all about a good time and also learning a ton of information and being able to convey that to other people that you actually do know your shit, even if you do act like a jackass. <laughs> <laughs> and some people aren't acting. <laughs> it just comes naturally for some. That's all. <laughs> well, I think this group is is kind of an example of that that community. When you look at all of us and where we've come from and the stories we have already just from meeting around whiskey and around uh, the marketing school and all the things we've gone back to and now live streams and sleepovers and whiskey adventures. Uh, sleepovers. You got to go to Matt's house and sleep over. In <laughs> Matt, I, I, I live five minutes right? from the Matt's house. You're not going to so. go on Matt's sleepover? <laughs> <laughs> we only live five minutes down the road, Carl. So yeah, it's pretty much it's not really necessary. It's a cheap yeah, three and a half hour ride. There's no driving back up and hanging out at Matt's for a while. <laughs> the party at Matt's house. <laughs> <laughs> 
Yes, we try. We have a good time. No yeah, we doubt. Do. Especially when we have private events, mm -hmm. private tastings, one on one. Those are really a trip. Carl knows about some one on one tastings. Yes. We good probably time. tried, I don't know, like 40 whiskeys in one night. It was a good time. <laughs> nice. So, so, one of the things, what, and this is your guys' channel. This is your no, guys' channel. Please go ahead. If you want to call that. So, so I've spent a ton of money on certifications and education and not just wine and, and so forth related. Uh, I got all kinds of degrees. You can hang on the wall written in Latin. Um, and so I find education in and of itself, even if you don't, it doesn't get you a job. You don't work in a vocation or something like that. I like education in and of itself. It's something I love the exploration. I've got thousands of books just on the other side of this, this camera here. So if you really learn a lot and you get a great experience out of it, whether or not you then flip that into a career, the career part is for me, is secondary it's mm -hmm. like, are you is your life enhanced um with the knowledge that you can then share with other people that for me that's that's primary uh, because the reality is people don't go into the wine business or the whiskey business mm -hmm. to get rich it, it requires a large fortune to make a small fortune uh, in the wine or whiskey industry and mm -hmm. everyone i know who works in the industry i have a lot of friends who are small age particularly up in napa valley um you know, they can barely you know, rub two pennies together, but they absolutely love what they're doing and they have a passion uh, for that. So the questions I have is, it, I was sort of reviewing tuition costs for, for other things that I've already done. Um, and I was looking at, for the for example, the, the WC diploma for, and they're not paying for your, your wines. Um, they're not paying for housing. There's a, they're not paying for meals. We're talking about just the classes. The, the level one, which is very basic, is like 750. And then if you they have level two, level three, level four, level four, there's six units. Each unit is about two grand. So at the end, you're paying anywhere between ten and twelve thousand dollars. And that doesn't all it does is supply books and classes and the exams. It doesn't pay for any wine other than what you take an exam and what you have at a sit down one day sort of seminar kind of a thing. Right. So mm -hmm. education's not cheap. Um, it, it's it you know, and it's more about I mean, anybody can go buy books. Anybody can study on their own. Most of us are self-taught because all the, whether you're talking about a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, a doctor degree, all they do is introduce you to a topic and then push you out the door, go study. Mm -hmm. They only give you, you only get this much, whatever you're studying this much. Most of what you're going to get out of it is what you're going to put into it from your own personal study. But they are there sort of as mentors and guides uh, in the direction of your, of your academic studies uh, in whatever field you're working in. Well, I think that's a good point to bring up, even from our class. I think, uh, guys, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, you know, Daniel had shared, I think he used the example of a person who is studying martial arts and they achieve their black belt. Um, it's not an achievement that you now put it on the shelf and you're done for the rest of your life. It just means that you've learned all the things that there are to learn that you can now begin your journey of practice and experience. And that's really where the learning happens. I, I really took that to heart. Uh, you know, when that was shared during the class, I think. I think it's, yeah. this. you know, we get we get an introduction, we get history, we get tasting, we learn uh, pairings, uh, we learn creativity, and then it's like, okay, now go do something mm -hmm. with it and kind of make your mark on whiskey or let whiskey make its mark on you. Sure, yeah. I mean, it's about learning how to learn about whiskey, really, and how to continue that on your own, mm -hmm. right? Right. Mm -hmm. And one of the biggest changes for me I was like, I, I'm basically a shut-in, or I was, I guess, a couple <laughs> of years ago. These days, maybe I wouldn't be able to say that so much. But like starting on this whiskey journey has literally changed the course of entire, like my entire social life, everything, all, almost everything surrounding my life other than dealing with my toddler is now whiskey related in some way, whether it's talking online with people or going out doing whiskey tastings or, or whatever it is. It is sort of focused many of the things that I do, and I don't work at all like in whiskey or alcohol or any sort of environment where it makes sense for me to talk about whiskey for money. It's just entirely changed the dynamic of my hobbies and everything else. It's, it's 
crazy how well, different I, I, I find this just helped me on my AA meetings to be a lot more sociable. <laughs> <laughs> sure, sure, sure. There's also less whiskey in those, though. Yeah. Uh, you'd be surprised. So, at least not as much of the good stuff. So, so give me, if you can, get, can you give me sort of a thumbnail sketch of what's the sort of course outline in terms of the various topics that you guys so, go through? I, I will say, as going through the level one wine psalm through quartermaster sommeliers and going through the level one through whiskey, um, the outline is relatively the same. Uh, on day one at the beginning, you're going to talk about uh, the how whiskey is made, uh, and then you start going into regions. On day two, you're finishing up with going through each region and what to kind of expect from that region, from uh, the different areas of that region even. Uh, and then at the end, you're going to take a test. Um, again, yes. like, the, like the level one wine, they give you a book ahead of time to read and to kind of understand so that you're, you're coming to the class kind of prepped and ready to go. Uh, but for the most part, I feel like the course was set up very similar. Uh, there were tastings throughout the day, uh, usually three at a time, so that you know your palate can kind of distinguish between three different things. Yeah, it's that deductive tasting uh, strategy. Yeah, where we would spend a lot of time. Can you distinguish which one is uh, primarily corn based versus malt based versus which one is rye? Or okay, here's three whiskeys. Which country did they come from, and why do you think that? And you know, let's see if you're correct or if you're wrong. And and it's it's all about learning to um, establish those patterns by which you identify certain characteristics in the uh, the smell and taste of the whiskey, so that when you encounter those characteristics again, you can better identify what it is that you're interacting with and dig into it a little bit more deeply and teach other people about it. Right. That's what I was going to say, but also teach you how to help others find those characteristics right. or help them learn how they distinguish different things, corn versus rye, et cetera. So it, it kind of walks you through those steps so that you can help somebody else get through those steps. Right. So that right. pre-study, I think is, is important so that you're not just coming in at ground zero on the first Absolutely. Day, but you have a priest. And so, so right now I'm doing videos on the history of Scotch whiskey, and then I'm going to do a series on uh, the business of Scotch whiskey. And I'm doing this in preparation for the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy uh, diploma in single malt scotch. Mm -hmm. But so I decided to, I could use my studying for video purposes and sort of reinforce it in my own head by making videos. But I'm glad to hear that, that you didn't just show up one day going, what's, you know, what, what's this, what's that, that you have some sort of, you already have a foot in the door and you're already on your journey before your first day of class. Yeah, you know, I, absolutely. I feel that somebody could walk in there without knowing anything and still walk out of there with passing the test if they actually pay attention. Okay. Yeah, if, if you're paying a lot of attention and, and taking some study, notes, <laughs> uh, you know, throughout the day and, and you're not getting uh, too wasted in the vault after class, right? <laughs> then you could probably still pull off level one. The, the next yeah. level, it does get progressively more difficult as far as the test goes. Oh, the right. prerequisites between classes get more interesting. Like, for example, I, I just did the level three a couple of months back. And the prerequisite, one of them to even go to the level three is that you have to have held a tasting so that you can talk to the class about how you ran it, what went well, what didn't go well, what you do different this time, all of that stuff, which as someone who is not it, <laughs> having a career at all. And it was interesting for me to figure out how I was going to organize that and, and make that happen. But uh, it worked out, thankfully. <laughs> Yeah, for me, yeah, you, you know. can't just necessarily, you know, show up to the classes, ignore it for, you know, six, eight months, whatever, show up to the next class, do it like it's not going to work very well. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's like, you know, I love, you know, sharing with you anyway to begin with. So to me, tastings came natural to me, although prior to like the Whiskey Tribe, I had a hard time getting catch with I forgot it at McDonald's. So it's, it built a lot of confidence in me to be able to talk to people. And get in front of people, which I could never have done prior to whiskey at all. Uh, it's just not going to happen. I wouldn't really talk to anyone. But now, as everybody knows, I talk to everyone and have a problem. And I never shut up about whiskey. <laughs> so, but you all already know that. Um, but yeah, I think that's one of the things is confidence building. One of the biggest things coming out of that class for me was was that, especially the public speaking and the marketing aspects of it, and then being able to knowledgeably. A lot of things I already knew because I'm, I'm okay legally at least 16 years, but really like I'll, you know, Eric knows out of the womb basically drinking alcohol. So 
you know, in your that, uh, just, I really enjoy teaching others about my passion for whiskey. And so hopefully someday it's turned into an actual business, but that's sometime down the road. So one of the things that it's important because the word marketing and, and marketing is in some, some people, it's like saying lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's like you, everybody has your lawyer jokes and your politician jokes, you know, and Mark, because there is a lot of bad marketing out there. In fact, I'm going to do a video on this later. I just saw a Versace commercial and it looks like it was made by the people who did the McCollin make the call commercial. Yeah. And so I'm going to do a video where I compare the two because it's the, the marketing is the commercial is so bad. Anyway, so mm. the word marketing tends to often have a negative connotation to it. And so, uh, or at least for some people, just kind of like lawyers and you know, like Robert Licorice jokes about, you know, that he was going to be a lawyer. And a lot of people are glad that he didn't become one. Mm -hmm. He chose, more, chose a more uh, a highly esteemed uh, profession. Um, but I think that kind of plays in there. People think, oh, you're just going there to learn how to push or, or just learn about branding and stuff like that. But it sounds from what you're all saying is it's more than just marketing, 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 marketing. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a lot more to it than just that. Right. I, I think that uh, one thing that was pretty fundamental is to, um, you know, when Daniel's teaching the class, well, Daniel and everybody else that was involved um, kept reiterating this point that you have to have a core base of solid fundamental knowledge in order to have any credibility with people that are in the industry, that are knowledgeable, that are producers or bartenders or, you know, people that work in stores or whatever it is, people that know their whiskey. You can't just walk in claiming to uh, to have some level of knowledge about it and and uh, have them easily expose that you don't know what you're talking about. So you need to have that part of it, but you also need to be able to be a good storyteller, to be relatable to to mm -hmm. your average person, to bring them into the whiskey community and not just intimidate them with bullet points and facts and history and all of those kinds right. of things, right? So it's knowing the balance between being able to back yourself up with some knowledge but at the same time to be an engaging uh, storyteller, an engaging host, and someone that can teach other people. Right. I think that was part of what I got most out of it because I am an introvert myself when it comes to crowds of people and whatnot. And prior to that, I don't even know that I would be able to do a live. I would just want to be in the corner by myself, quiet, don't pay attention to me. But being made to get up in front of people that you just met earlier that morning mm -hmm. kind of gave me a little bit more confidence in myself that I can get out there and actually explain something to somebody without reading it off of, you know, my cue card here. Right. So that was a big thing that I took away. Real quick, Carl, before you jump in, uh, the marketing to me was more about marketing yourself and being able to market yeah. ideas, not just marketing products Whiskey, themselves. Yeah. Right. That's excellent. That's an excellent point. I really, really like that. So uh, we've been at this for almost half an hour, and I can already hear people complaining they're not drinking whiskey. I can feel a tremor in the forest as if thousands of voices are suddenly shouting, where is the whiskey? So, <laughs> I'm drinking, yeah. I'm drinking an Emroot Fusion, really, really enjoying this. This is one I like to go back to. It's one that it's, I think it's affordable. It has a nice combination of uh, you know the the Irish um, uh, peat, but it has a nice sort of dried fruit characteristics uh, of uh, fig, date, raisins, and stuff like that. So this is one that I really like to go to, and is really affordable. So what are the rest of you guys drinking? And tell me a little bit about it. We well, uh, poured Joseph Magnus first. Mine's gone. I need more. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I poured myself a little bit of Hibiki 17 since Ooh. that's one of the first whiskeys that I had on, on the journey during that first tasting. And it's no longer yeah. available, you son of a bitch. And it's no longer available. So and it's, it's just fun to have. That's a different story. All these beautiful whiskeys live at Brad's house. The whiskeys I don't have live at Brad's house. I know so where to go. Come on over. Come on over. Got to go to freaking Canada then. It's like, I don't know, several thousand miles to there. It's, it's a little bit eight. of a trip. Eight. It's a little bit of a trip. Look, I, I I make the trip to Austin like four or five times a year these days. You, know? True. you can you can come up here now and then. I'm staying on your couch and drinking your whiskey though. I love that Joseph Magnus sure. was, for Bourbon Month. It was my bourbon of the month, even though it's mm. finished. It's a it's a finished bourbon, so it's not 
you know, a classic bourbon. I absolutely love, love that one. And I'm a big Japanese whiskey fan. You know, I've got the Bicky Harmony, but you said it's a 17 year old. Mm -hmm. Oh, dude. <laughs> it's pretty good. Come, come on over, Eric. <laughs> Anytime. So, next question, question, Carl, so, next question is it looks like you're pouring a little. Is that a Glen Morangy? Yeah. Is it's that it's a Spios. Spios. Oh, Spios. Okay. Okay. Nice. So one of the questions. So I'm curious about. So the basic format, outline of the class. What do they so, sort of cover? It, I, it's great that I'm sorry. I'm, my brain just went brr on names. That you also a wine psalm. Will be. William. Yes, sir. All right. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm 53 years old. I'm lucky if I remember to put on my underwear before I. <laughs> The heck out of that <laughs> <laughs> so I like that you have because because it's easy to communicate that you have knowledge in both kind of like I do um, uh, and you're working in the industry as in a, in a restaurant because you can sort of convey what are these two different worlds like what are the two level one education are like between these two and I like the fact that you said that they're very similar which tell in terms of structure um, yeah, because what that tells me is they're doing the right thing. Um, it it right feels thing. like it. It really does, Eric. So the court of master sommeliers, these guys, are, these the masters that teach, they have passed the most difficult exam in the world. Period. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they have structured the level one um, course, and now you're telling me that this class, this whiskey class, it has a similar structure to it, that gives me a whole lot of confidence. Um, a lot more confidence that these guys really know what they're doing in structuring this class. I really like that. Yeah, because they actually, the people that helped, uh, like it was Kate and Joe Van Name, have done a bunch of certifications around the world, and that's what they base the course on for the certification parts of it. So I think that also helps you have people that have done this for a living prior to the Wizard Academy uh, setting up the course for the certification itself. So that helps a lot. But also the whiskey I'm drinking is the uh, Maker's Mark Cast Strength. The reason I'm drinking this, this was my grandfather's favorite whiskey, was just regular Maker's Mark, and the, the cast strength came out right when he died, and so we actually drank it out of his casket with him on the live. So this is a special whiskey to me, and I'm drinking this one tonight. And that's how you tell a story. Exactly. Right? Yep. And what, what Matt just did, that's how you do it. That's how you make a connection with the person you're talking to. You know, Matt is talking to us. He's not talking over a counter, you know, uh, selling the whiskey or whatever like that. But that's exactly what he just did is exactly what you do is you make a connection with the other people on there and you share a personal story, something about the whiskey and, and why it's special. Um, I did that in, in my in my video when I was talking about uh, the, the whiskey schools. I gave, I talked about the value uh, of the Chateau Le, 98 Chateau Lafitte Rothschild. Besides the being the first growth from Bordeaux, it was the occasion which I, I shared it, my 50th birthday, and the person with whom I shared it, my best friend, and, how, and, that, and he since then passed away from cancer, that wine is more than wine whiskey is more than whiskey it's everything else that sort of revolves around it um as uh, uh brad was saying you know his his life his social life the people he interacts with it's it sets a whole environment uh, mm -hmm. of, it's a catalyst for the people he interacts with and so it's more than just this liquid that we have in the glass it's everything else that sort of stems from that and that's one of the things Roy, you know, Aquavite likes to talk a lot about is being a whiskey evangelist and the connections that it makes with other people. Yeah, it's not whiskey. Mm -hmm. It's a good tool. So, sort of stepped on each other. Say it again, Josh. Oh, I said uh, Roy uh, likes to say it's not whiskey till it's shared. Right, mm -hmm. right. Because so, so how many of you were, did you think, okay, I just want to do this for fun. I just don't want to do this for my personal reasons. Or I actually want to see if I can get my foot in the door in the industry or something like that. I've done a little bit of both, actually. And uh, I've I've definitely absolutely as a result of, of uh, attending the class and just being around that community, opened some doors, a lot of doors in the Texas whiskey industry in particular, and, and have actually done a little bit of work. Nothing that's going to replace my job. Right. There's nothing like that. Uh, I can't. I think there's probably a tendency for folks to do a really cynical, what's the return on investment for this versus, you know, I spent X for this class. Do I get, you know, real tangible benefits in my bank account as a result? And 
Now, mm-hmm. the reality is, for me at least, probably not. Uh, although, who knows? Some door may be opened at some point that that may make sense for me. But um, you know, a combination of of social opportunities and a little bit of business opportunities have been open for me. Um, I I didn't really go into it intending that, but you know, that's been a happy uh, result. You know, I did it m- mostly out of curiosity and after having some exposure to what they uh, what they do down there. Right. So one of the things, so so when I when I went and studied with three master sommeliers, there were sixteen people in the class. I took a night class, and there was also a day class. Um, so uh, my best friend who passed away, he was he was a banker, but he also was part owner of a winery. So he had more of a wine background um, for his own business. Um, th- one of the guys went on to become um, a sommelier at the French Laundry, um, which is not a place to wash your clothes. Up in the Napa Valley, so you may have you may have heard heard of that one. It's it's a real high end uh, winery. Excuse me, yep. uh, restaurant. Um, some of the others were working at wineries. One of the guys he he, he realized he could make more money in business, so he went into uh, business. He went moved to New York. Um, but for me, even though so I do some consulting, some side things here and there. Uh, just a couple weeks ago, um, dealing with customers. And one of them I had never met before. He says, I hear you're Eric. I go, yeah, hi, how you doing, sir? Da, 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 da. He goes, I hear you're the guy to talk about whiskey. So this is nothing, we're not working industry related, but mm-hmm. he goes, I hear there's this guy there. And so it, it's been a way of both wine and whiskey, of even, even non-whisker wine related business to have something other than to talk about, because you can't talk about politics, you can't talk about religion, yeah, and I don't give a rat's ass about football, baseball, professional sports, but I have found <laughs> in, in in non in a non wine or whiskey uh, arena, it becomes a catalyst mm-hmm. to make interactions uh, with clients and customers um, because it's something else you can talk about other than business. So you go to a meeting and there's charts and there's graphs and there's slides and blah 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 blah, blah and it's it's kind of boring. And then you go out, yeah, then you have lunch, whatever. But then you have those social moments in, in between meetings where you got to have something else to talk about. And I find people come and talk to me and they want to talk about wine or they want to talk about whiskey. Absolutely. So one of them said he was looking for a particular whiskey. I made a note of it during lunch. I went and looked it up. I searched it, found where he could get one. I then printed out a map, mm-hmm. took him a printout of how much it would cost, and then handed it to him. And so he was able to go back home with a bottle of whiskey which was done for him um, and it made a huge impression on him and it would help our, our business. And so you don't have to work in the wine business or whiskey business to use these abilities to help you in, in your career. You may find it as a catalyst in, in a lot of other ways as well. That yeah. makes sense. As a sommelier and working with wine and, and selling wine to people, um, we had a comment just come across a minute ago. Uh, I find that there are a lot more people that want to talk to me about whiskey than there are that want to talk to me about wine. And I don't know if that's because there's a stigma around wine that isn't there around whiskey yet um, or what, but Eric, I, I'd love to hear your insight on that because for me, when I tell people I'm a wine sommelier, they kind of shut down and don't want to ask me questions. But if, when I tell them I'm a whiskey sommelier, they have tons of questions about anything and everything they can think of. So you think there's a there's still sort of a persona of a snobbery around wine that isn't around whiskey, and it's the wine snobbery, or at least the perception of it, that then puts people at arm's distance. I, I completely right think that. Right there. I completely think that. Even in my spiel to talking to tables, I uh, sometimes say I am a non-snobby person uh, to kind of just put that out there because there are so many people that think that I'm going to be automatically very pretentious because of you know my title and what I do. Well, I can say your haircut and your beard screams pretentiousness to me. <laughs> yeah, that, that's part of the reason why I keep it is is to kind of put those things away and to kind of shove that aside. So the that's probably the biggest thing that does people just sort of say, "What the heck?" And that's the reason why I started my video with this, like you know, money, money, money. Yeah, money, you know, is the cost. And if you don't do your research and if you don't look at other other marketing schools, classes, other types of certifications across the industry, it seems uh, extreme until if you actually think and actually do a little bit of research, I find that is actually on par with a lot of other industries. So did you find it prohibitive or did you just figure, okay, look, we think it's going to be worth it. We see this as an investment or 
what was your t- or, or, and did you have to convince someone else, maybe a spouse or somebody to say, you know, I'm going to go do this or how, how did all that work out for you guys? I have a good story about that. So <laughs> my wife was like, okay, I'm going to go with you and do it. By 10 o'clock that first day, she wanted to do it too. It was how much she enjoyed it. She figured it was like, oh, whatever. She went to the open with me, you know, but then she actually, she actually really enjoyed it and found out, you know, how much she likes whiskey in general. She didn't drink over near as much as she really enjoys whiskey now. So that was one of the cool things for me is she's gotten into it, not as much, obviously. She puts up with this channel and all the whiskey events and whatever. But, yeah, so it was kind of neat to see someone else getting into it that wasn't into it prior but had so much fun in the first two hours of the class was, hey, I want to do this too. So, yes, we were out some more money, but that's okay. It was worth it completely to share that experience with my wife. So that was a lot of fun. So that's just kind of a neat thing. So, yeah, completely – it is expensive, yes, but you get – I got way more than I ever, you know, as far as dollars goes, way more out of it than that was ever cost. I could never, the, I took more notes in those two days than I've taken probably my entire job that I currently have had for the last 11 <laughs> years. I mean, I learned a tremendous amount in those couple of days. And that's, and that's significant, your comment, because of how much whiskey you've got in your house. So most <laughs> people would say, dude, just spend that money on Amazon and buy yourself a bunch of books. You've already got the whiskeys. Why do you need to take, take a class? Well, I, the mark the really is it's the marketing, the public speaking, the pairings with food. That's the kind of stuff you, you can learn. You can read about it in a book, but you can't experience it. Once you experience it, that's a better way to learn it is to actually see it in action. And there's no doubt seeing it in action was much more uh, shows you a better way to do it than simply reading out a book. Reading a book's great and all, but seeing it in action always proves you it is possible to do exactly what they say you can do. Right, and you get the opportunity to not do that stuff like in a vacuum, right? We got the uh, opportunity to interact with one another and bounce, you know, comments and ideas off of each other and learn from one another and and see each other uh, make revelations and make mistakes and struggle with things. And I think you learn a lot more than that (laughs) with that kind of experience, that sort of group experience, right? Than you do from just sitting by yourself with a book and a glass. It's not a cult. (laughs) it's kind of cult a little bit but from from the business end too like even just completely discounting what you learn which is a ton Mm -hmm. the connections that you make Mm -hmm. just hanging out in a place like that with other people that are so interested in whiskey as a culture to to front up that money and go to a crazy place called the Wizard Academy and hang out talking about whiskey for a couple of days. Just those connections. If you're trying to make money at it, is the most benefit you could possibly get from something like that, I think. Even as somebody who's not trying to get a job in the industry, I got job offers just off the fact that I had been hanging out with distillers and other people that have been running, you know, liquor stores and, and different things. And it's, it's, it's all connections and how you deal with uh, sort of meeting meeting these people. And I, I keep in touch with almost everyone that I've been to any of the classes with now. Well, not just that. It's, it's, it's after you get through the class and you've passed, you get access to, to actually converse with all the other people who have come before you. Yep. So you have other people's brains to pick. If you have questions or, or you need to bounce something off of, you have other people to reach out to still. So it's not just, Oh, you're done. Go be on your way. It's, it's constant learning from that point and, and shared constant. Yes. Yeah, shared learning and constant resources. Yeah. So before we moved on yeah. the, one of the things aside from just having the group of people to share with and to, Kind of support you there's that other side of the knife if you will um and that's the people that will kind of put you on the spot and hold you accountable and help you kind of step out of your comfort zone mm-hmm. oh yeah mm-hmm. you know i work with cadets here at tex a&m and we've got a saying that says you know there's no uh, growth in the comfort zone and there's no comfort in the growth zone and there was a couple of things at the psalm course that i was not comfortable not oh, yeah. from a culture standpoint but from a hey, I'm about to read this creative writing thing in front of 20-something people, and they're going to tear it apart. And I'm supposed to be okay with that. (laughs) All right, let's do it. And you know what? They did tear it apart. And for a second, I was like, damn. But then five seconds later, it was like, well, that was really good feedback. I really appreciate that. You know, And I would not have done that if I just got a book and stayed home in my comfort zone 
and gave myself my petty rationalizations that makes me feel good about myself. You got to be in a place where you, people are going to help you understand that, you know what? You're really blowing smoke right now. Try again. What I find helps get out of your comfort zone is when you do live streams is don't wear any pants. <laughs> <laughs> Check. Oh, uh, Eric's poor, poor chair. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, I got a question. So, um, Brad, you're in terms of the training, you've gone a little on a little bit further than the rest, correct? Uh, yeah, I, I just went through the level three in April. Okay, so I'm kind of curious about um, instructors, guest speakers, and so forth. It's not just hanging out with Daniel and Rex or whatever the whole time. So, who actually, and what other kind of people do they actually have uh, involved in instruction as well? Uh, so there, there's a bunch. Uh, Daniel is usually involved in at least some of it, or, or was. I guess now that he is taken over uh, some other duties, he might not be teaching quite as much. I'm not sure about the, the future levels, but he was when I, when I was taking them anyway. But there's also a bunch of other people. There's uh, Philip and Susan Pritchard, uh, who are very active uh, teaching all, all the different levels, and they always have sort of a rotating uh, group of people that have done the courses in the past. Many of them work in the industry or, or have in the past, uh, like the Pritchards, uh, you know, fr pretty famous uh, Tennessee distillery. Mm -hmm. uh, you know. So there's there's a lot of active industry people that, that come in and out, and they do at least a couple of guest speakers. Like th this last time, there was one of the uh, brand reps um, that did the local sort of Austin uh, area. I'm not sure what his whole um, area is, but just talking about how brand reps work and like different mm -hmm. career paths that you could take using whiskey knowledge and, and marketing and everything and not necessarily be the guy doing whiskey tastings, but like there's all kinds of different avenues where, you know, you have a lot of benefit with that information and could quickly rise you to the top if you put a little bit of effort in uh, just because of that extra you know, knowledge and the connections that you've been making. So Brad, Brad I got a follow-up question. So in between um, the level one, the level two, do they give you like a list of books to read, homework assignments or that kind of a thing? Uh, there's a couple of books. They actually gave us a couple of different books at the level one when I went that we were, were tasked to read before doing the next level. Um, there was some, some, some non-book sort of snippet things, websites and things that they linked you to as well, just for extra knowledge. And just being active in yeah, the Facebook groups for, for graduates and, and things like that, being available to answer questions of people coming in and just sort of trying to be active in the community. I think I ordered three books right in the middle before class was even over. I'd already ordered three books off Amazon that they mentioned. Yeah, they they meant they bring up a lot of books and suggest that you you should read them. Not necessarily they don't ask you necessarily if you have in the next levels, but it definitely helps absorb the information that you're going to get if you've sort of prepared by reading the materials they suggest. So I'm, sort of a, I'm sort of a bibliophile. Uh, right here, I have a bookcase right here full of books, and I've got more. Right here are all whiskey books. So that if, if, I, if I was doing a live and I needed something or something getting in my head, I could reach over here and grab a book out there. Um, but of course now electronically, books are sort of going the way of the dinosaur, but I'm still, I love this. I, just like I love the smell of whiskey and the bottle. I love the smell. I'd rather of hold a book in the hands. Yeah, yeah, I like the texture of it. I like, I like feel the feel of a book. Absolutely, absolutely. And yeah. I gotta get my ink pen and underline and write notes and that's how I remember stuff like highlighter. that. Highlighter. I'm a highlighter, yeah. yeah. I'm very much a, a book kind of a person to it. Yeah, I'm like an audiobook audio person, audio. but whiskey books don't necessarily translate very well to audiobooks. So <laughs> I, I have resorted to uh, Dead Tree Editions for a lot of that stuff. <laughs> Dead Tree Editions. So are the like rest of you planning on books? Highlighted and, and underlined and, and just everything, yeah. So are the rest of you planning on perhaps going on to another level, or what do you guys plan on doing in terms of your future education? Yes, level two and three for sure. Yeah. They have to create four and five first, but yes, all of them. That's the plan. Yeah. And, and I'll be back to help, which is a nice benefit of taking yeah. the classes is you could always go back and help the previous levels doing the pouring for the whiskey tastings and just generally helping out. Yeah, Brad's yeah. been making vague threats to come and help at one of my class. <laughs> oh, I, I'll just help you on it. Pretty sure. So um, 
there's a very there's a lot of parallels as I'm listening to you, a lot of parallels between what you experienced, what I've experienced. For example, you know, in terms of making the connections while taking the class, the person I mentioned earlier, is, is, his name was um, Christopher Lloyd, same name as the actor, not the not well, not the actor. Mm -hmm. We met at that class and we really hit it off because on weekends in between we studied during the week and on weekends we were doing uh, tastings and doing flashcards and that kind of a thing. And we became best friends through that. Um, and, and still a lot of people I maintain uh, connections through that. Um, so it sounds very parallel in terms of um, at least somewhat, at least uh, from the structure of the class and comparable to the level one for, for the quarter master Maliers. In terms of the overall topics that are covered, although you know it's a parallel, um, in terms of the social atmosphere, in terms of learning how to present for the certified level in the court of Mastermalliers, we had to do uh, table service for a fine dining restaurant, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, which was my weakness. I was I'm not I don't have any problems public speaking, but table service because I didn't work in a restaurant that was I was really 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 nervous about that. Um, so but so there's similar parallels in that you have to sort of get over that hump of being nervous and be able to interact and be able to talk to people there. Um, and then learning how to not just have a bunch of facts and dates and statistics, mm -hmm. but able to talk in terms of a story um, about it. So I'm really liking what I'm hearing because I see some parallels between the journey, my early journey that I had in wine and then what you guys have had in whiskey as well. Mm -hmm. I, I agree with that, Eric, I really do. So, did you, have you guys since then changed your, you say your taste or so forth regarding favorite whiskeys or what you particularly like or what you, was it something you didn't like before and now you do you like? How has this affected, regardless of business and facts, your personal, your personal enjoyment of whiskey? How has it enhanced that? Well, let's just pick out a lot of things that we knew were there, but not necessarily how to describe it per se, and have gotten a lot better at it. Even though it's only a couple of months ago we took the course. A lot better at pulling out things from the whiskeys that maybe we weren't able to yeah. do before. And so basically, especially also with the blinds that we had to do, we realized really truly how hard it is to do, even though it's only three at a time, how difficult to nail down like a specific brand or something is. Picking on a grain is one thing or a country, but even sometimes the country, sometimes, you know, if there's a surprise in there of India, and that was not the one we were guessing at all, that would be an Indian whiskey in there. So it's mm -hmm. things like that that you realize how similar and how different every country is that makes it. <laughs> So it has enhanced us to, uh, I guess, for a lot of people to branch out into different whiskeys you never tried before, like uh, in the vault, Floki, which is which is great for twenty. <laughs> <laughs> it's all right. I tried no. it last time I was there. Was it's good. not going to happen, Brad. It's good. No. It's, it's happening. So what's a Floki? It's, it's a oh. sheep shit whiskey that they use. Like <laughs> instead of peat, they use sheep shit. That was weird Iceland whiskey. Like it's somebody tricked me. Somebody yeah. tricked me into it. And <laughs> I, well, he shamed me into it, really. It was more of a, he kept bringing the bottle to me and I kept saying no and he kept egging me on and finally I had some. So that was Anthony, right, that did that to us? Yeah. 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 I'm well, glad I wasn't there at that yeah, point. Yeah, me too. I, I had happening. with me, Anthony. Level two, I'm, I'm getting you to drink that. I don't think so, Brad. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> it's happening. Very Even good. if I have to I trick you. Try anything. So what about the rest of you? How has this sort of enhanced from what you had before to where you're at now, enhanced your just... Beyond the academic part of it, just the personal subjective part of it, how has that sort of enhanced your personal appreciation of whiskey, you think? I, I think that it actually, my appreciation for whiskey diminished because I appreciate less whiskey and only enjoy certain whiskeys now or only only really enjoy certain things. Um, I have now become a snob. <laughs> I kind of I became a snob, yeah. Um, it's kind of unfortunate. <clears throat> I'm definitely buying a lot more whiskey now. Um, I need to, I need to turn my room into something more than it is because I have this shelf that doesn't hold any more whiskey, and that's, that's a problem. But uh, all kidding aside, I think one of the one of the moments that I had after the class that really kind of hit home with me was um, hanging out with a friend's wife, and uh, she was tasting something, and honestly, I can't I can't remember what it was. Um, maybe it was uh, Glenn Morangy or maybe something a little lesser known than that. And, and what she was trying to look for was kind of what we call, I guess, shiny, you know, where it's got that thin, just something to it. And I don't know how to place it. Mm -hmm. And as we began to talk, it was really just, well, you know, this distillery uses, you know, taller stills. And sometimes that creates this kind of finish. And, 
And it wasn't like a super geek out. It was just, we were just talking and she was enamored by this. And, and it really just created a connection and we're able to talk about the whiskey. And I think by the time it was all over, we both appreciated the whiskey, even though it was not a whiskey that we would both say, we're going to go buy this whiskey. We could appreciate the whiskey for the merits of how it was made and what the company that made it was trying to do and create. And we could appreciate that. And I think that was just an awesome moment for me to be able to realize, I understand why this whiskey tastes the way it does. And I can help somebody else appreciate it and not just say, ew, right. throw all whiskey out just because of that whiskey, which wasn't a bad whiskey. It's just not their taste of whiskey. So one of the things, you know, in touching on that becoming a whiskey snob, um, I used to not admit this. I, I kept this. This was a personal secret. So I'm very eclectic in my music, and I, I'm now big into opera. And the first opera album I ever bought was done by Michael Bolton. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I saw him on television. It was PBS. I heard it. I kind of liked it. I grew up hearing opera, but I had never been into it. So I went and bought the CD. You know, I, um, He's not exactly known for singing opera. Uh, bought the CD. I was like, really, really I'm like, wow, I'm really liking the opera. I'm really getting into this. I then ran into Andrea Pacelli and, of course, Pavarotti, Plaza mm. Domingo, so on and so forth. Years went by. I hadn't listened to Michael Bolton is singing. His, the album's called uh, My Secret Passion. I then went back and listened to it, and it was like someone with their nails on a chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't become an opera snob, but I did become to become – have a great appreciation for the real, the genuine, and the more the, those who really know what they're doing mm -hmm. when they're singing. And I think there's a similar experience both with wines and whiskeys. It's yeah. you're almost better. Don't drive. Don't if you drive a, a beat up piece of crap car. Don't ever rent a really nice fine automobile. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> It'll be you hard don't, back you don't to need you to know what you're missing in that BMW. Exactly. There's no need for you to know what you're missing. It's it's fine. Exactly. Just drive a beat up car and be fine with it. Exactly. And I think there's sort of that experience in wine and whiskeys. Once you start tasting better things, it's not a snobbery per se. It's just you're going to realize, wow, there's some really good stuff out there. So yeah. Eric, what, what is your uh, what is your Michael Bolton opera in whiskey? What's the thing that you uh, you used to think was amazing, but now you've been, so been it, the real deal? So there, there's a whiskey <coughs> I still really, really like, but my impression of it has changed. So the so my story is I was studying for the WZ diploma when the units on spirits. So I bought these little minis, you know, for because I wouldn't I didn't want to build this. That wasn't my plan to build all this. Um, so I buy these bunch of little minis, and it was a mini of the McCollin 12. Mm -hmm. And I was blown away by I still like it. I was blown mm -hmm. away by it, but I gave it a score of 95 points. I <laughs> think. <laughs> <laughs> Jeremy over at Social, Social Sippers Club, he goes, well, I didn't give you a whole lot of room to grow in your appreciation of other whiskeys. And, of course, obviously, if I were to review it now, my perception would be different. But I still – and it was only – I think it was 43% or maybe 40 or 43% ABV. But mm -hmm. still, it was my first impression, my first love. It's still a great whiskey. I just mm -hmm. don't put it in that high esteem. Um, so I can't think of any – oh, oh, my God. Uh, no, I, I have some bad whiskeys, but I never liked them to begin with. Uh, <laughs> I will bring to Texas and share with you guys. Yeah. Oh, please don't. Oh. You can bring a oh, bad whiskey to Texas and share with us. No one's allowed to run that here ever. It's be thrown away and burned. Yeah. <laughs> you don't need to bring the bad ones with you. So, so, so the Glyph Molecular Whiskey, which was made in a laboratory in San mm. Francisco, it, it improves in flavor when you pour it down the drain. <laughs> I'll pay that. We need to try that just to, just for science. I yeah, will bring. I that. haven't had the chance. I have to try it. It would be interesting. So, um, we talked about so how you guys got into it. What you guys are doing now. What are your future plans in terms of what, what you want to do with whiskey? Whether it's more certifications or just your own personal exploration. I'm I'm going to Scotland in a month from now. I'm going back to Scotland and traveling around there. And I know that that's expensive and that's a challenge and a lot of, not everybody can get out there. Um, so what are your sort of plans for the future and what you want to do in whiskey? Matt, you go first. Well, the grand, the grand plan is eventually to open our own uh, tasting room, event center, um, host whiskey events, and also eventually host our own whiskey conventions. Um, mm -hmm. Do some traveling around the world to different distilleries. Taking we call them our crusades for our channel. When we go to the distillery and talk to the distillery and film, 
um, hopefully take tour, you know, become tour guides eventually around the world to that. We have a lot of grand plans for whiskey. A lot of really cool things are coming down the pipe. So this is just the beginning of this amazing journey for us. But yeah, we're really looking forward to all the really cool stuff in whiskey. That's my grand plan. And to keep taking the certification levels and learn as much as I possibly can. And then eventually make this a career because being an accountant is not very fun. It's a really boring job. <laughs> I, uh, I'm still very much in the whiskey and wine world. Uh, I was actually judging a wine competition earlier this afternoon. I'm going back to do that tomorrow morning. Uh, the International Wine and Spirits Competition uh, in Grapevine here here this afternoon. So um, I'm going to continue to take courses as well, and probably both wine and whiskey, uh, at least for the time being. I'm excited about it. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to continue my education as well. Um, I do have a day job, which has absolutely nothing to do with whiskey, unfortunately. Um, I plan to be there every step of the way with Matt. Uh, all the things that we have planned, I look forward to those. But eventually, I'd like to get my foot into the door of a distillery one day and, and work my way up um, through a distillery and, and hopefully eventually get into where I'm actually working with the whiskey. Um, I would say, you know, for now, I've, we, you know, Brad and I and, and Vito have the channel and that's, that's kind of the fun project. I've also doing a little bit of work with the um, Texas whiskey industry in general with the association. And we're going to be doing a little bit of work here with uh, holding some tastings and doing some in-store events and stuff for some of the distilleries. Um, longer term, I have kind of a wild idea that some sort of uh, either independent bottling or uh, or a compass box style blending company, maybe specifically of Texas whiskey, once there gets to be kind of enough of it and it you know comes of age a little more and there's there's uh, a lot of stock to draw from would be a would be a really interesting idea of something that I could see myself getting into. Uh, but it, you know, I do continue. Uh, I plan to continue to go back and do the. Uh, uh, higher levels of the uh, whiskey marketing school. Your your master blender's right here. I work for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you we talked about this in class, didn't we? I think so. I think so. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, like like Josh said, I, I'm also sort of doing the the YouTube thing with the Cask Strength channel that mm -hmm. uh, Josh and Vito and I do. And once the Wizard Academy has their level four song class nailed down, I, I will be back for that. I'm sure. But uh, other than that, who knows? So um, we talked about what you planned on for the future, how this has enhanced your, 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 your whiskey experience, how you got into it. So pretend I am someone who's sort of on the fence. And I'm like, well, yeah, I think I can come up with the money, you know, and I think I can afford it, but I'm kind then of- You can't afford it. If, if that's the way you're thinking about it, yeah. then, then it's not for you. This is, this is for the people that are passionate about it. This is for the people that really, really want to go. Whether they can afford it or not, they'll scrimp and save uh, to do whatever they can to get there because they have a passion for it. Right. Yeah, so, give me, style. So, so give me sort of three reasons that you would think. So if you're a recruiter for the school, let's put, just put it fair. The me, Whiskey Vault. <laughs> the whiskey vault <laughs> and the whiskey vault. <laughs> Whenever you want. Fair point. <laughs> there is that. There is that. <laughs> Sorry. I mean, honestly, that that to me is is the end all of everything. It uh, is our like, library. Like I mean, like you said with the wine classes, mm -hmm. you're paying ten thousand dollars for the course to actually get you in with the master sommeliers to actually discuss and taste these whiskeys, or I'm sorry, discuss and taste those wines with the master sommeliers. That door is open to us. We can go down there and, and utilize that library, utilize every book they have in their in their catalog, utilize every whiskey they have in their catalog, uh, and truly hone our taste, truly hone our sense of knowledge, um, because that's all available to us because we've completed level one. Yes. What about the rest of you guys? Well, I think convincing anybody that if you're interested in the beginning, I think. This is really and truly a, uh, a passion, a lifestyle choice, really, at this point in time for the, uh, you know, the health benefits of whiskey. It's definitely a good reason to start doing this. It's completely it's rolled alcohol of whiskey is by, far the, is by far the healthiest, and it's also gluten-free, naturally. It's still about the gluten, so it won't kill you if you're a celiac either. So those are good reasons to go. But really and truly, um, to basically, even if 
you don't do anything in whiskey, the marketing side of it alone, the public speaking and the pairings, even if you use it in a different industry, just because you have the whiskey knowledge can enhance your life. You'll talk to clients that also enjoy whiskey and then you can talk about it. And even though you're really trying to sell them, you know, cars or watches or whatever you're trying to sell them, that's a high end product. You also can talk about whiskey because pretty much those kind of generally go hand in hand is whiskey and other high end products. Just they always have been and always will be. And so I think it's just one of those things. It really will enhance your life. And the friendship you gain are, are lifetime friendships with people that we can contact anytime. And they'll always answer our questions. And, and there's no snobbery. Everybody's happy to answer your questions. And it's just a really great opportunity for you to enhance your life in general. So I'll, show, I'll share another story, another whiskey story in, in business. So uh, a former company I was working for, and there was this VP. And every time I saw this guy in the hallway, his eyebrows were furled and he always had seemed like he had a scowl on his on his face and he seemed really stressed out and you know people would seem to not want to be around this guy and i happened to mention that i was going to have a one on one meeting with him and people were like oh man oh geez you know so i'm sitting down there with a meeting with him and this guy you know he's he's he's, he's way up there he's an uppy up you know and i'm sitting down with this guy and i, I Whiskey and wine just oozes out of me, you know, literally and figuratively. Um, it's, it's just part of my normal conversation. And I just happened to mention something about whiskey. And the expression on his face changed. He perked up. And he goes, oh, I really like Glenn Goyne. Mm. And, and mm. I had I had, you know, I'd been, next thing I know, is we're having this, even though we were there to talk business, I spent the next half hour talking to him about Glenn Goyne, my visit to Glenn Goyne, uh, recommending other whiskeys to him. So uh, the skills of, of and making connections with people goes beyond working in the whiskey business, but as, just using it as a catalyst in everyday life and, and conducting business with other people as well and enhancing relationships with other people as well. Because Glenn Goyne is glorious, one of the best whiskeys ever made, hands down. It's one of my absolute favorite distilleries. The 10 through the 21 is what I currently have. I really like to try the 25. But all of them are really, really good. There's, there's not come a bad on, You want to try the 25? Just come on Son over. Son of a bitch. It's all in Canada. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so apparently if we want to play the drinking game of pull out the bottle that Matt doesn't have, we need to play it with Brad. Yeah. <laughs> Matt drinks a lot. I could, probably, I could probably find some things that he doesn't have in the cabinet. I have no doubt. We, 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 we can't. We can't do that. We had one. We had one. <laughs> so do you guys find yourself leaning towards any particular category of whiskey? All of it. I love it. <laughs> that says all of it. I'm I'm mostly a high proof bourbon. Okay. Um, I, I reach for the higher the better. I'm a peat head, so any anything smoky. Peat head checking in. There you I, go. <laughs> I tend towards malt whiskey, regardless of whether it's Scotch or Irish or Texas or whatever. I, I tend to like malt whiskey in general, peated, unpeated, whatever. Um, you know, I love bourbon and rye and everything else, but I gravitate towards malt overall. So I don't have any, really any other, other questions. Uh, I think you guys have pretty much answered it. I think I've picked up as much as I can. I mean, there's only so much you can get from here. And eventually, you know, someone has to either make the leap and go or not go, yeah. um, you know, and you, you, there's only so much you can convey in words. You can't convey, I mean, talk about your, you know, a kid's trip to Disneyland. Did you like Disneyland? Oh yeah, it was great. Tell me all about it. We drank lots of whiskey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Old Disneyland. It's whiskey. Words, words, whiskey. Will fail the, words will fail to do justice to the experience. You know, if I, had to tell, I can tell you about, I can show pictures of my trip to Scotland uh, and show video and whatever, but it fails to do really justice to the beauty of, of Scotland and why I fall in love with, with Scotland. But I think experiences that you have um, in a class like this, in the community like this, and tasting the whiskeys like, and the connections you make, and the memories uh, that you bring out um, that lasts a lifetime, um, it's really hard to convey that to someone, particularly if someone has, has sort of a prejudged idea, uh, uh, pros or cons, uh, yeah. to really convey that as well. Absolutely. Well, we appreciate yeah. you a lot, Eric, because that's part of the reason why we wanted to have you on tonight, and that's part of the reason why you know we kind of put this together was because um, we wanted to convey that sense of family and that sense of um, community that, that the school actually has. Well, for me, the, the financial issue isn't the, the, isn't the challenge. It's the schedule. It's work. And to, to get a break away, if, that, if they had it on a I wish, if they're ever watching this, is if they could do it on a weekend, 
<laughs> do it on a weekend, <laughs> it would be a lot easier because <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this I'll show I could butterball anything. So but here's so here here's what <laughs> you call it a complaint, you call it a complaint. It's on a Tuesday, the class is on a Tuesday and a Wednesday. You're gonna use Monday as a fly there, uh -huh. unless you're local. You're gonna use a Thursday and perhaps a Friday to fly home. I would recommend if you my, my recommendation is if you're gonna go down there, take the whole week pre yep. and after weekends and go visit distilleries, go visit, yeah, go visit uh um garrison, go visit uh you know, everybody everybody down there and get the Texas experience. Um so make a whole week out of it, make a whole vacation out of it, not just about, about the class, but do those as well. But I do wish they could do it on a weekend because I could pop down there over a weekend, not have to use up any vacation time um, and kill a weekend doing that. That's just the one thing I really wish they had. It was the best vacation guys I ever used. Seriously. It really was. I, I wasn't complaining. I thought it was the best vacation I ever been on my I know, life. I know, but I'm burning, I'm burning three weeks of vacation to go to Scotland. Yeah, uh, that sounds so, terrible too. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not getting any pity here. <laughs> oh darn! You got to go to. The <laughs> yeah, what I mean is, I don't have uh, the money's not the issue. It's the time and yeah. trying to get the, trying to get the time, and that's for me personally. That's the challenge um, that I have to figure out how I'm going to get this into a schedule because I do plan on going. It's just how I'm going to squeeze this squeeze this into a schedule. Um, oh, I want to be a host when you go. I, I really want to be there, sir. That, that'd be fantastic. Okay. Yeah, but I think also, you know, which we I don't know how much is talked about that. Not only is it the course, but it also includes your room and board, all your food. Every meal is phenomenal. There's a 24 7 okay. kitchen. You can make pretty Amazing much whatever you want in there. All the whiskey. All the whiskey. I mean, yeah. for the money, really, just the whiskey alone, seriously, is the cost of the course. I could never try half the stuff ever in a bar, let alone afford to try it in a bar. Right. right. I mean, it's an incredible uh, deal, just the whiskey alone. And that was one of sort of the things I covered in my videos. I did a comparison of hotel costs and yeah. food and all the rest of that. that and I appreciate the fact that you actually put all that in there. Right. Um, right. Because people for, forget forget about that. So, yeah. um, anyway, so I'm looking forward to getting down there. When I can fit into a schedule, that's going to be sort of the real challenge. Uh, because next year I'm planning on burning a few more weeks of vacation going back to Scotland and, and working there. But um, if anybody happened to be watching uh, who works there, if you could schedule something for a weekend, nudge, nudge, hint, hint, I would uh, greatly appreciate that. Yeah, I don't know. Hopefully they will at, at some point. It, the unfortunate part of the fact that it is a business school that does other courses as well, yeah, and the right. weekly stuff oh, is right. a very small portion of it. So the weekend yeah. is probably taken with more right. very business-focused things because – that's a more available time for a well, lot of people. When I studied with the master sommeliers, it was a it was night classes. So I would work all day, then drive to the culinary school where I took the classes and would be up till 10, 11 o'clock at night and then go back to work in the morning. So it was a long day to work all day and then go to class, but it worked out in my schedule and I was able to do it, you know, like uh, 17, 18 weeks. Um, so that's my one challenge right now is trying to figure out how I'm going to fit into a schedule. Yeah. I mean, one of the things, too, in the vault alone, when they open the cabinets, is things like this that are inside the vault. <laughs> this doesn't exist generally. This is my <laughs> premium bottle I've ever got. So this is a very Shut special up. bottle to me. I got it for my birthday in 2017 from my favorite liquor store manager. He's like, oh, I'll get you something special. So as I asked for birthday, I figured I'd never get it, but it got the very first birthday I ever owned. So this is a very special bottle to me. First premium, first birthday bourbon. And this is a phenomenal bourbon from Old Forester. I, I I'll be have, over in five minutes. <laughs> okay, so I have, I have sort of a Pavlovian response to whiskeys. I start drooling right? <laughs> all over my mouth. So I have to kind of like wipe my mouth hair a little bit. Unless you have these <laughs> so anyway, so it's not my show. If it was my show, I'd be willing to or ready to uh, wrap it up. Um, but uh, I think we are too. Okay, sounds good. So any last words? Yeah, I guess uh, everybody, what are, what are you guys covering on your channel? So you guys can uh, talk about that too. Uh, what are we doing this week? We haven't figured that out yet. <laughs> that's, that's actually pretty standard for us. I don't know if anybody watches uh, our channel, Cask Strength, but it's uh, super professional. Yeah, we figured it out. <laughs> yeah, we figured it out like two hours before. Maybe. Maybe. For live streams, yeah. For yeah. 
our actual reviews, I figure it out, and then I figure out a couple. I figure out here's a whole crap of stuff we need to do, and then two hours before you get here, I try to actually get all this crap done. Yeah. Really, you know, getting better at this. Hmm. And Eric, what do you got coming up? A whiskey week for us. No, uh, no whiskey channel for me, but our uh, Bourbon Society has. Uh, um, we partnered up with Garrison Brothers and a local restaurant. That's one of the things that's been kind of fun since uh, the class is we've kind of fallen into this vein where we've uh, had the opportunity to meet um, distributors and brand ambassadors and partner with different restaurants around and bring them into the restaurant. And in one case, the restaurant was carrying their whiskey. In another uh, case, the restaurant wasn't carrying their whiskey, and now they are. And so it's kind of neat to be able to set up those uh, partnerships. So we have a... Uh, we have a Garrison Brothers event uh, this weekend. We have a Whiskey 101 uh, with Twin Liquors. And then uh, we have our monthly tasting that uh, happens at a uh, speakeasy downtown. Uh, the bar owner opens up an hour early for us. And uh, uh, shout out to Dustin. Um, he's an ex-Marine, uh, former Marine. Yeah. We love those guys. They help us out. And uh, and it's just been a really, really great, great thing for us. Only about 25 folks in the uh, in the Bourbon Society right now, but um, we've been able to have a lot of events and do a lot of fun things. So, neat thing we just kind of fell into, and we're just we're just riding it and and sharing. Awesome. Just ride the wave, Carl. Yep. <laughs> All right, Eric, what you got coming up? So, uh, as I mentioned before, right now I'm doing a thing on Scot a history of Scotch whiskey. Um, that should finish just on, on the day that I, I'm on the plane back to Scotland. I'll be visiting another 15 dist distilleries there. Um, I've been studying at the Edinburgh Whiskey Academy when I come back. Uh, my, well, actually, probably while I'm gone, my series on the uh, business of Scotch whiskey uh, will play. After that, I'm thinking about, I'm still working on it, um, is doing a, a series on tasting, how to taste, analytical tasting, carrying over what I've learned from master sommeliers from the wine world over into the whiskey world. That's I'm, I'm still playing with. I haven't developed the coursework for that. And then August, I'm probably going to take some time off um, fr from whiskey. Just I need a break. I'm I've been busting my ass on, on my channel, just working a lot, putting out a lot of content. Uh, but take take a break, get out, do some traveling, uh, and take and then be fresh to come back to it in September and see where we go from there. Yeah, your content lately has been amazing. I really enjoyed your Texas month, especially being uh, being Josh being the official Texas ambassador of whiskey, apparently. We just send whiskey from Texas to all the YouTube channels. We're really good at that. Because, <laughs> you know, we have to corrupt the rest of this, this country and give them good whiskey, you know. In what fact, I was, to I, was supposed, I was supposed to be in Texas this week on business, and I was going, already had people from, from Texas contacting me, wanting to meet with me. Um, so that's been delayed. So I may be back in Texas in August or September, but we'll have to see how that goes. It's still so hot. I hate to tell you that. Yeah, I know. yeah, not as bad. If it's September, you're better off. Super yeah. September. Maybe. It depends on the year, so, you know. But yeah, not another thing, uh, I know coming up is on Friday. I know Bill's having a big stream uh, with a bunch of channels on there. And that should be exciting. Um, so we've got that, and we've got several other really cool things we've talked about in the past coming up on our channel. So uh, I think if everybody else is good, I'm going to tell everybody, I really appreciate everybody coming on the channel tonight to talk about this. And, uh, Thanks for having me on. We're in the chat. Yeah, thanks. Thank you guys. Yeah. Right. Cheers, everyone, tonight. Thanks, everybody, thanks for everybody coming on. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. Right. Cheers. Cheers. Cheers, guys. Cheers. Cheers.